to order Buell City Council meeting, uh, Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Mr. Jeffries, please take the roll. Councilor Keeley. Councilor Loeffler. Here. Councilor Hadrava. Here. Councilor Towner. Here. Mayor Carter. Here. Foreman Pink. Here. Attorney Carney. Here. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Um, we do not have any additions or changes to the agenda, correct? We do not. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? As is. A motion. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any comments or questions on this? Kind of new, a little different. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah. I could make a comment on Go. that. Would you please? Good catch. Yes, we've moved around a couple of items, and I believe it should be a regular order of business to approve the agenda, either as it's been originally presented, or if there are any changes or additions to it, and, and to make that approval via motion before any further discussion or business is taken up by the council. So, uh, without, uh, without hearing any uh, other input from legal or anyone, we will have that as a standing item of business right after the roll call. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? All right, hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Agenda is approved. Excellent. Moving on to reports from department heads. Mr. Pink. Hey, so some of you might know, and this is more to let the public know if they haven't heard. Uh, I was not at the last meeting. Uh, I was down in St. Cloud for the Minnesota Rural Water Association's technical conference, it's kind of continued education for water and sewer. And I've done it before in the past, this has been my third time, but I have submitted our <clears throat> water for the Minnesota taste test in Minnesota, oh, well, I should say, sorry, Buell won, and so our water will now represent Minnesota in the national taste test in Washington, D.C. in February of 24. Excellent. 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 So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I actually just met with uh, Robin with Minnesota Rural Water this morning, and she's put an article together about Buell and the history. I gave her some information with the history of Buell and our water, and so they will be putting out a article in a magazine. I don't know when that's going to come out, but she said she's going to put it together tomorrow. So. Uh, will she give you a heads up on what magazine and when it'll yep. be available? She'll, 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 it's, I think it's for the Minnesota Rural Waters. They have a magazine that comes out. Okay, perfect. Four, three, three, so on. Awesome. We'll be in there and then. Yeah. On to the national level. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be pretty exciting if we can win that. And Heck yeah. Yeah. Really back up the. Uh, yeah, slogan on our water tower. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Do you, um, has Buell ever been involved in that? Previous uh, we, video? So John had, I don't know how many times John had submitted before me, but he had tried and it didn't happen. And I, this, like I said, this is my third time submitting it. So we have attempted it before. Okay. But it all comes down to who the judges are. Yeah. So everyone's got a different palate. So. Awesome. That's exciting. Thank you. That is exciting. I was mm -hmm. pretty happy about it. <laughs> Still happy about it. <laughs> awesome. Got anything else? Uh, I guess we talked about it, but um, the lights on Jones Avenue for any residents that are wondering why there's no lights, there's a fault within the wire underground. Ground's frozen, there's nothing I fully can do. Like I could waste uh, weeks and weeks and weeks digging through frost, but it just doesn't make sense for me to chase up something I don't know where exactly it's at. So the lights are just gonna have to remain off until the ground thaws and kind of 
dries up a little bit. And then Lyle is back to work now. He started on Monday, so we're full force again. Awesome. All right. All right. Thank you, Trent. <coughs> Mr. Jeffries. Thank you, Mayor Carter. I just have a couple of things. Uh, one to echo what Trent just was speaking about and to relate uh, what was, a, I think, a pretty good little story. The mayor and I were down in St. Paul at the legislature a couple of weeks ago testifying uh, with the Senate and the House regarding our water infrastructure project. And we were just getting ready to go into the Minnesota House of Representatives Capital Investment Committee hearing on the matter. And we had brought down some Buell water to hand out to the committee. And as we were opening up the box, we learned of the award that was received from the Minnesota Rural Water Association. So we took that opportunity to let the entire committee know as we were handing the bottles out. So it was excellent timing mm -hmm. for uh, that, that very positive little event. And we look forward to a stiff national competition mm -hmm. and a, a good showing there. The only other item I wanted to uh, bring up, and I'm sure it will be mentioned more so this evening is congratulations to the girls basketball team at Mount Iron Buell High School on their very well-deserved state championship. Uh, congratulations, everybody. You have the support of our entire community there, and more will probably be said on that later tonight. That's all I have here. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, um, Citizens Forum. Mayor, there have been no citizens that have signed up to weigh in on anything this evening. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Consent agenda. Uh, the regular city council meeting minutes from March 7th, 2023. Uh, claims payroll number five, $13,026.70. Accounts payable, 18 or $82,452.34. Now, Mr. Jeffries, there is an amendment to this, correct? Correct, Mayor Carter. I have an adjustment to the AP accounts payable section of the claims uh, of $7,407.41. This came in later after the claims list was prepared. Uh, it is being put before us tonight so that this can be paid prior to getting any late charges assessed, which would happen prior to the next council meeting. So this will adjust item BII under AP to 89,859.75. And the total claims, including payroll number five, gets adjusted to 102,886.45. Do you have the, the total on the accounts payable again? The total adjusted accounts payable is 89,859.75. Yes, sir. Bringing the grand total to 102,886.45. 0 0.45. Okay. So claims will be 13, payroll number five, 13,000 at $26.70 accounts payable in the amount of, with the amendment, $89,859.75, with a grand total of $102,886.45. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Jeffries, do you, um, this is an addition to waste management, this amendment, correct? That's correct. Um, is this a, a typical 
change? My understanding, Mayor, uh, that this is a monthly fee for municipal solid waste collection. Okay. I cannot speak yet as to whether or not the amount of 740741 is an average, an above average, or a below average amount. Oh, is it just the timing why it, it had it, to be an amendment? Complete, it's completely timing that okay. it did okay. not make, it, it got received after the, the <clears throat> claims list was generated and okay. compiled. That clears things up. Any, anyone else have questions? <clears throat> no? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent agenda approved. Moving on to business. Item A. <clears throat> it's a resolution 2317 authorizing the city to receive funds from the Northeast Service Cooperative for a wellness grant in the amount of $300. The, is a, the city is a member of the Northeast Service Cooperative Health School Insurance Pool, NESC. NESC extends a grant monies annually to its members, encouraging them to engage in health promotion activities. In 2023, the, grant, the granted amount was $300. Uh, recommended is to adopt city is to adopt city of Beulah resolution 2317. Do we have a motion to adopt resolution 2317? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. <clears throat> Questions, comments. Mr. Jeffries, would you like to touch on it? As a member of the Northeast Service Cooperative Insurance Trust, again, we get annually uh, a stipend amount for what is being suggested to be health promotion activities. Acceptance of uh, this $300, which is what it was automatically this year, is required by resolution of the council. And with your permission, I would be prepared to read resolution 2317. Yep. Uh, city of Buell Resolution 23-17, a resolution authorizing the City of Buell to accept funds through the Northeast Service Cooperative Insurance Pool Wellness Grant Program for health promotion activities. Whereas the City of Buell is a statutory city organized and operating under the laws of the state of Minnesota. Whereas the City of Buell is a member of the Northeast Service Cooperative Health School Insurance Pool, NESC. Whereas NESC has extended to the city 2023 wellness grant funds in the amount of $300 and whereas the city council hereby agrees to accept these funds for health promotion activities and expend said proceeds in conformance with NESC suggested activities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Buell city council does hereby adopt this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Anybody have any questions, comments? You said we've had this before. Correct. I'm under, my understanding, Councillor Loeffler, is this is an annual item that has been at least the last two years, if not longer. Okay. It is not applied for. It is a benefit of membership, to my understanding. And the amount, like it says here, is just based on the number of contracts and the size of the group? That is my understanding, Councillor Toner. The uh, $250 is the smallest base group that I have identified, and $500 is the largest, so we're in the middle-ish. Motion. We have a motion and a second Point already. Of order, the motion yeah. is on the okay. floor. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Jeffries, will you take the roll, please? Councillor Keeley is absent. Councillor Hadrava. Aye. Councillor Loeffler. Yes. Councillor Towner. Yes. Mayor Carter. Yes. 
Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to item B. A recommendation to amend the 2023 Buell City Council meeting schedule to add a regular City Council meeting following the currently scheduled working session on April 4th, 2023, and as well as August 1st, 2023. Uh, the 2023 Buell City Council schedule provides for a working session to be conducted in lieu of a regular City Council meeting on April 4th, 2023, and August 1st, 2023. Staff suggests that it is in the better interest of the city to also conduct a regular city council meeting on these dates rather than extend the time between regular meetings and these at these times of the year to one time per month ongoing city activities and business at these times of the year are such that extending the period between regular meetings is not desirable especially in august when property tax matters become more relevant than at other times of the year Staff also suggests giving some consideration to the concept of expanding holding working sessions on a more frequent interval, uh, possibly four to six times a year. Recommendation is to accept staff suggestions regarding amending the 2023 Beale City Council schedule. We have a motion to amend the 2023 Beulah City Council meeting schedule. I'll make that motion. Okay, make thank that you. Motion. You have a second? I'll second. All right, thank you. Ah, questions? I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And added, adding more into next year's calendar would make sense too. I mean, adding the two we did was already an increase from what I understand. So. I agree. What time would it be? It would be immediately following the working session, correct? Council Loeffler, my understanding is that the working sessions are set for a 4.30 in the afternoon, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd like to either suggest immediately there upon conclusion or at the standard of time of 6.30. Uh, those working sessions are on the same date as a normal council meeting would have occurred. Mm -hmm. So we would not be changing any dates, just and then we would be staying at the same time if we had them at 6.30. As far I, think, as the, I think you should so set a time. Yes. Right, that's what I was going to say. Like it should right. be like a set time that so people would know. Right. Well, and for the legalities of posting for a meeting also. Right. Right. Well, right. But so that being said, if we went at 6.30, that would definitely be in conformance with posting requirements. We don't know how long the working session would take, so that's kind of why that's a little iffy. So well, I, I would point, recommend 6.30. Yeah, at that, at that point, you'd be limited up until the, the time of the scheduled council meeting. Correct. I think it's a great idea. A little more work for the council, but uh, working sessions, get some things on the table, work together, get thoughts, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, when a resolution comes up, Everybody's scrambling and trying to, right. you know, this way we can we can have discussion on on items that are coming and moving into the council meetings where they come up and we have to make decisions on them. We're already informed on it, and then that way we're not struggling through things or, or maybe feeling misinformed on a topic. You know, Mayor Carter, if I could just give one other aspect of that. These council meetings are where business takes place. It's where decisions occur. Yeah. This would not be what happens in a working session. And vice versa, uh, a lot of maybe the field work, the, the, the deeper conversations, have a more meaningful place in a working session than they may at a council session where the order of business is exactly that, to transact business. Anything else? No. No? We have a motion and a second, correct? We do. All right, with no further comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried.
Schedule is amended. All right, item C. Um, mayoral proclamation designating April 2023 20, as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. The Sexual Assault Program of Northern St. Louis County requests discussing and adopting a mayor's proclamation recognizing April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Their advocacy program also wishes to share information regarding the Teal Ribbon Campaign honoring local survivors of sexual violence. This campaign is available for the community. Uh, information has been included on these and other sexual assault programs of North St. Louis County awareness and education initiatives. Um, it's recommended to adopt the sexual assault program of North St. Louis County Mayor's Proclamation recognizing April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Do we have a motion to adopt the sexual assault program of NSLC Mayor's Proclamation recognizing April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Um, should I read this proclamation now or after it's approved, Mr. Jeffries? I would suggest after discussion of anything. Okay. Uh, um, Council, would you recommend well, reading after uh, approval? After <clears throat> approval, yes. because uh, it hasn't been approved the, for the mayor to do it. So once the mayor is approved, then you could uh, read it uh, in its entirety so the viewing audience would know exactly what's in the document. Excellent. Okay, do you guys have any questions, comments? No. Well, they included a lot of information in our packet. There is. Yes. Well, it's, um, I don't know if the easiest way to share it is just to read the website for or the public. Or just, or just this front page. Oh, well, that's, a, that's, that's the proclamation. proclamation. Right. I'll do that if, if approved. I mean, the statistics they have here, and it looks like, you know, a lot of the other things that the program does. Right. It's, uh, I've worked hand in hand with them, and they're fantastic to work with, and yeah. They have a lot of outreach for those programs and support. Jeannie Olson's been at it a long yes. time. And she's fabulous. And I heard that she's retiring soon, which will be a tragedy. But I'm not for her. <laughs> yeah. So is this information we have in front of us available to the public also? Yes. <laughs> What's the easiest way to find that website? Right yeah. Here. I think so. And then they have a contact number too to call for any other at 24 7. But did you have the website? Sorry, Randy. Oh, yeah, it was right on the uh, bottom of that first page they gave us on the back side of the proclamation. www.stopsexualviolence.org. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They also have crisis call numbers. Local 218-749-4725. They have a call or text number, 218-780-7227. And all this information it should be available to everybody right on, right on the website. It's a hard topic, and it happens more often than it should, that's for sure. You said you work hand in hand with these with this organization? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You guys have anything else? Are we, so the, the teal ribbon, are we putting, do we get one and we get to put it out, right? Councilman Loeffler, my understanding is that the teal ribbon campaign is available, but we need to contact the program 
for, for, for that participation. Um, in 2022, there were 463 uh, victims in the surrounding communities, one from Buell. So my reading of this is that we would be able to have a teal ribbon for the one and, and any in the future that would be identified in our community. Anything further? No. All right, with nothing more, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Motion carried. With that, 2023 Sexual Assault Awareness Month Mayor Proclamation. Whereas Sexual Assault Awareness Month is intended to bring awareness to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and is a public health concern for individuals, families, community members, and communities as a whole. Whereas child sexual abuse, exploitation, rape, and sexual harassment impacts all communities, as seen by national st statistics, one in three girls and one in six boys will be sexually violated by the age of 18. One in five children is solicited sexually while on the internet. One third of all sexual violence cases in Northern St. Louis County happen to children 17 years and younger. Whereas in fiscal 2022, our local sexual assault program of Northern St. Louis County has worked with 464 primary and secondary crime victims of sexual violence whom reside in our communities. The program has provided more than 32,000 documented trauma and victim focused advocacy services with these crime victims. Whereas annually, hundreds of community members, ages preschool through college, aged, and area professionals are provided awareness and prevention education through the program. Whereas staff, board members, and volunteers of our local anti-sexual violence program, the sexual assault program of Northern St. Louis County encourage every person to speak out when witnessing acts of violence, however small, and to help survivors connect with the community allies. Whereas, we must work together to educate and engage communities in sexual violence awareness and prevention and to believe, listen, learn, and support its victims and family members. Whereas, a growing number of Minnesota leaders are committed to sexual violence prevention and whereas, all Minnesotans must be part of the solution to eliminate crimes of sexual violence. Therefore, I, the mayor of the city of Buell, Minnesota, do hereby proclaim the month of April in the year of 2023 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Again, a hard subject. It happens way too often. of advertisement for 2023 at summer beach attendance authorization for staff to publicly post and publish the city desires additional professional services over the summer months to assist in maintaining the recreational and public safety services of the community specifically the city wants to hire some summer beach attendance for the city of Buell public beach at stubbler pit um, <coughs> We have a motion to authorize staff to publicly post and publish a notice of advertisement for 2023 summer beach attendant positions. I'll make a motion. Thank you. <clears throat> you have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Randy. Questions, comments? How many years have been since we had somebody down there taking care of the beach? Four. Good. And I'm glad we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's been posted, at least I know last year and probably other years, but I don't know where else we can post it to maybe get 
some more interest. Word of mouth, right? Yeah. That works great. Trent, question for you, if, you, if yes. I may. Um, how's our facilities down at the beach? Well, <clears throat> they're in working order. We, in the past, have tried to keep them open with healthy attendance, but vandalism is a problem, so that's why I constantly had to shut them down because it's just right. there isn't someone to watch over it. People just think they can do whatever they want to do, so yeah. it's a problem. As the world is. Yeah. Um, with these beach attendants, um, assuming we're lucky enough to have some, um, those facilities will be able to remain open while someone's attending the beach? Yep, okay. yeah, they're in work order. We might have some plumbing to fix, but there's not a whole lot of plumbing there, so it's... Yeah, excellent. What about the, the docks, fishing docks? I know that's probably not quite part of it, but there's just, I don't know, one in the yeah. north is, is that so our, is that our thing? thing? Is that our thing or? That's what I don't know. Because <laughs> okay. it was a DNR dock, but then I think they might have given to Minnesota Power and Minnesota Power might get it to us. So I might be getting all this wrong. Okay. So but we have done, we have replaced boards boards that we have replaced were actually given to us by the DNR, so, uh, okay. Yes, we, we know that there's the one dock, we just never got around to fix it, we tried to barricade it off, but it's out of visible eyes, so people just wreck stuff, it's an ongoing problem. And some of the boards people just tear off. <coughs> right. It's, or kick off. It's not fun. No, unfortunate. Well, one step in the right direction. Right. If we have attendance down at the beach, we can have facilities, correct? Excellent. Would they be working alone, or would it be a big two at a time? Um, so I think are, if they're under 18, I think what we've been told before is they, this city prefers to have two people on if they're under 18, but I don't know, I guess, I don't know if that's rule or preference or, I mean, ideally it would be nice to have more than one person either way. Right. Hopefully we'll get some people applying. Mm -hmm. A good summer job. Mm -hmm. oh, who wouldn't want to hang out at the beach all day? <laughs> we gotta get summer first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Summer snow attendant. Right. Summer <laughs> snow attendant. <laughs> like uh, all right. Any more comments? Questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carried. Item E, notice of advertisement for 2023 Public Works Department Summer Street Labor. Uh, authorization for staff to publicly post and publish. Same as beach attendance. Uh, the city desires additional labor services over the summer months to assist in maintaining the attractiveness of the community. Specifically, the city wants to hire summer street labor for Public Works Department activities, including lawn mowing, weed whacking, and other light duties. Um, do we have a motion to authorize staff to publicly post and publish a notice of advertisement for 2023 Public Works Department summer street labor positions? I make a motion. Thank you. We have a second. A second. Thank you. Questions? Comments? Well, we better pass it. We're going to have to get what we're trying to raise. Yeah. <laughs> Take one anyways. <laughs> How's uh, how's the interest been in that those positions that we have every year? We last year we filled them, right? Yeah, okay. we've done pretty good. Excellent, good. Especially compared to I know other communities kind of have struggled with it, but we've been pretty fortunate in town here. Awesome, good. And I know that some kids have already approached us. So I know we'll really? have good. employees again this year. So. Awesome. awesome. Mm -hmm. We live in a great town, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Uh, item F. Request to hold a concert at the Old Band Shell for First Lutheran Church fundraiser. A request was re received from Sheila Labarge to hold a small concert at the Old Band Shell location at 300 Jones Avenue on July 14, 2023, as a fundraiser to help replace an outside bulletin board at the First Lutheran Church. This event would be open to the public from 4 to 8.30 p.m., would provide free music and or other entertainment, and would offer food for sale. Maintaining positive and supportive relationships with community organizations is important and valuable to the city. Um, motion to permit Sheila Labarge to hold a concert benefiting the First Lutheran Church at the Old Band Shell on July 14, 2023 at no cost, contingent upon obtaining and maintaining in effect a release slash waiver of liability. A motion. Thank you. A second. Thank you. On to questions, comments. Uh, <coughs> we have you, Sheila here. Yeah. <laughs> you need into it, or you just want to use the front, or just the front part? We're gonna. Ha I have Steve Sogla and then Jesse Munter so far, and I don't know if you remember uh, Russ from the apartments, the the crazy northern, the Norfin. Do you remember him? Well, I'm asking him to come in and kind of do some music too. Basically, all I need is a source of power to do mics and amps for them and to run an extension cord to, for like um, big crackers for hot dogs. Because I'm working on writing letters to um, Jubilee. I already got approval from Old Dutch and we're going to serve um, pop and water and things like that. And we're just going to have the food more over towards the bushes and the music more towards the, the stage. I know that there's a, a bigger area there, despite the wall being put in. It's fine with me. I know that there's wood and like a big steel beam that's in there. That's not realistic this year to take it down. So I'm fine with just holding it in there. It's more accessible too for older people and it's in the main part of town. So people will drive by and be like, hey, what's going on, you know? So, I know that Diana was going to ask Trent if there was power either an alley light pole or if there was a way I could get it from City Hall. There is power to the building. Uh, exactly how accessible it is, I'm not positive yet, but I, I'll be able to make it work. Okay. I mean, it's not like we're going to have like a street dance where I need all the bells and whistles and lights. It's just... Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's in there, but there is power to the building. Okay. So we'll get it figured out. And the band shot, like it worked, like the stand, like there's nothing, like going to fall or anything or... Well, if they're not, if they're not I was just limited to the stage. The stage. Yeah, just yeah. the stage. Everything else is because <clears throat> this door's... All yeah, it's all sealed, sealed up. up. And more I, and more I, now then. Okay. I knew that that wasn't feasible for them to open it and actually have them inside there this year. But that's something that I was like, you know, even right. as a kid, I remember hearing music there. But yeah. So well, all, all, sorry, all performances will be on the ground level. Yes. Okay. Yes. If they want to put something, you know, their speakers or something up higher. I would like for them to do that so music can project and it won't be at people's foot level. But otherwise, no. Nobody will be out. Okay. I think it's July 4th, 14th, from 4 to 8 30. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's going to be fun. Bring your own chairs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to be dancing. What do we need chairs for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> July 14th. Can we, I mean, do you guys need chairs? Can we see about borrowing some from the community center? Or? I wouldn't want to do that. That's too much work. Well, benches, those. maybe. Okay. Do we still have the blue and yellow benches, Trent? 
in my hair. So. <laughs> probably in the shell. I bet you they're in the shower. If they're in the shower. Yeah. Uh, so last time I was in there, I only recall a bunch of like music stands for sheet music. There's a lot of them in there. Yeah. Oh. I haven't. It's been a long time since I've been last was in there. Are there chairs downstairs in the basement? I think no, I saw some we down there. Well, maybe there's some left over, but we moved everything. Okay. Because it was a pain. Bring them up and down. Bring them up and down, up and down. Okay. I'll figure it out when it gets closer. I'll seal it officially. <laughs> <laughs> Lost in my calendar book, sorry. Uh, yeah, excellent. This that should be fun. Thank you, Sheila, for doing that. Thank you so much. Um, any other comments, questions? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Probably get with your office regarding a liability waiver. Yeah. All right, moving on to item G. Uh, I might have somebody on file. Appointment of yeah. Sheila Labarge to the City of Buell Recreation Board. An expression of interest was, receipt, was received from Sheila to join the Buell Parks and Recreation Board for the year, for the 2023 year. Um, currently, one vacancy exists on the Recreation Board. Um, do we have a motion to confirm the appointment of Sheila Labarge to the City of Buell Recreation Board for a term expiring December 31st, 2025, effective upon passage? I'll make that motion. Thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, comments, questions? Well, thank you, Sheila. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thank, you. thank you. She's already proved her worth. She's hey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her yeah. Her yeah. <laughs> Initiation's over. Yeah. yeah. Do I get the megaphone now? <laughs> you don't need one. <laughs> I don't think there's enough glass insurance in the city to... <laughs> awesome. Yes, thank you, Sheila. Um, with that, our rec board will be full once again. Thank you to everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody. That's awesome. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion is carried. Congratulations and welcome. <clears throat> Item F. Appointment of Frank, is it Fobish? Mm -hmm. yes. Forgive me, I'm not good with names. Um, appointment of Frank, Frank Fobish to the City of Buell Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission. An expression of interest was received from Mr. Fobish to serve on the Buell Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission. Currently one vacancy exists on the Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, do we have a motion? To confirm the appointment of Frank Fobish to the City of Buell Long Range Planning and Zoning Commission for a term expiring December 31st, 2025, effective upon passage. I'll make. Sorry. Thank you. I have a second. A second. Thank you. Questions, comments? Well, I've worked with Frank and um, he's wonderful, so I'm excited. Awesome. So this is full two now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We've had a with this, we will have every board and commission with the city is all full, all of it. That's awesome. It is. Thank you to Frank, thank you to Sheila, thank you to everybody in the community. That's awesome. All right, any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Fabish. <clears throat> and my City of Buell Water Infrastructure Improvements Project. General Community Project Status Update. 
little informational subject. Mr. Jeffries, would you like to take this? Thank you, Mayor Carter. Well, the city recently submitted a fiscal year 24 general community project form to U.S. Congressman Pete Stauber's office to seek potential federal funding for additional activities associated with our municipal water infrastructure and improvements to that system. Specifically, this request and its scope was to further address the city's water storage system needs, the water tower and or other storage basins, and the city water distribution system needs, meaning additional infrastructure piping installation for the continued expansion of the municipal South Industrial Park. As it relates to now, as well as it relates to the future. We also included an additional consideration for future increased residential needs. We also submitted similar funding requests to U.S. Senators Smith and Klobuchar's offices. We received a response from Congressman Stauber's office indicating the Congressman would like to officially make a request for this community project to be included in the fiscal year 24 appropriations bill. In order to do that, additional information has been required in order for this request to be considered. And the submittal deadline for that information was March 19. Staff had compiled additional information including several letters of community support from members of the City of Buell business community and the information has been submitted to Congressman Stauber's office. And please note that absolutely nothing is guaranteed through this funding submittal whatsoever. The, app the appropriations process is very long, very competitive, very unpredictable. Staff recommends that we continue to monitor efforts or staff, it's recommended that you keep, continue to monitor staff effort, efforts at attempting to secure potential funding sources for these initiatives. And I have a couple of updates from that even. First off, thank you so much to the city business community for coming to the table and putting the support letters together. It's great. We can only go forward in this also, we have already received response back from Congressman Stauber's office indicating our submittal has been found to be correct in form and substance. Uh, we are talking about a couple of small adjustments to the submittal, but it appears at this time it's moving forward yet again into the Congressman's appropriation requests. So, again, what I'd like to stress is that this project is broader in scope than prior projects may have been. It is intended to look at the present and future water storage needs from a capacity standpoint, regular capacity, capacity should there be additional business or industry in town, additional capacity should there be additional residential need in town, and definitely for public safety in terms of uh, fire protection event needs. Also with regard to the distribution, we have had some preliminary ideas about how to configure the South Industrial Park. I'd like to suggest that that continues to be looked at. Perhaps there are some reconfigurations, perhaps the parcels that have been identified out there could be moved around a little bit, maybe a few more. Uh, maybe a concept of stressing parcels and land for highway commercial type establishments versus a traditional industrial park type of a bigger investment. And then, again, to put the carrot in front of the council, when Damien 2 sells its remaining lots, I believe there are three, we may be out of residential property. It may not be too early to consider looking into another residential expansion somewhere. 
and uh, how aggressively that may be approached uh, will be up to the wishes of the councils to how we w might want to market the community for residential growth in the future. So this is meant to open the doors to all of that. Uh, we were looking for slightly over $3 million for this next phase of the project. And uh, we look forward to the anticipation to hearing back from the federal folks. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions? Um, I guess not specific to this one, but the uh, the rest of like the bonding bill process that we've been going through the last few weeks or years. Uh, is there like a broad um, I guess explanation of what what we have to look forward to, or what uh, what people can expect, or what the process looks like, um, just so we have an idea of what what we should be watching for. Councilor Towner, thank you. Uh, since we last met, since you last met, Mayor Carter and I have been to the state legislature. We have approached uh, both the Senate subcommittee for capital investment as well as the House. Spoke earlier in the meeting about the the House. Both of those committees will be forwarding projects, including ours, into what is commonly called state bonding bill. The House has actually passed theirs forward, and at this time, in case you have not necessarily heard, the State Senate has not carried that forward as of today yet. They are, um, have been pretty clear in saying that there needs to be, they need to see tax cuts in other areas before they will consider passing the bonding bill. So for this session, that is where it is being held. If that prevails, should that go forward and become uh, this year's bonding package? If it, if it passes, my understanding is, is that our projects are included on, in that, this request on the state level is 1.5 million, would probably be earmarked for, well, will be earmarked for fiscal year 24. Good chance it won't be available till calendar 2024. However, if the project is earmarked as being allocated funding, then we could probably put some funding packages together to allow work to happen in 2023, calendar 2023, without having necessarily to expend those funds until 2024. Now back to your central question, Councilor Towner, it's a pretty hard question to answer. Uh, the business of state government and the ability to get funding for projects therefrom is a complex and dynamic set of circumstances. It's not necessarily clear that a well-deserved project is going to get the requisite funding it may need. It is many, many, many times dependent upon other governmental or more correctly said legislative initiatives and how one hand works with the other, let's say. So to say that I know of a schedule or a set of process steps that from now, now being, we've applied, we've given testimony, we've demonstrated our need, we have an eligible project, we have a project that deserves consideration of funding. To go from now to then, which is funding in hand, I cannot give you any concrete mechanism of any sort. Uh, I can. I can sit and again say, so far I've been really quite pleased at how our project has been received and the feedback we've gotten from there. I would anticipate, hopefully, that should bonding prevail this year, which would be very good for it to do because it did not prevail last year, 
after they make up the the appropriations which were applied for last year. Hopefully there's still enough left over and we're on the list to get into the, the this year funding, this year appropriation part. Sorry to dance around that, Councillor Towner, but that's the best I can do. So main points are we've done everything on our end to the best of our ability. And now it's in politicians' hands, which may not make you feel good. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel good, but <laughs> Now we wait. Yeah. No, I think you've answered my question more, more than I could expect. <laughs> if it was an easy answer, I wouldn't have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? This was just informational. All right, moving on. Item J, comprehensive plan update project proposed payment schedule status. Um, <clears throat> I think Mr. Towner inquired about a payment schedule from the comprehensive plan, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, ARDC. Uh, the city previously received a project proposal for a comprehensive plan update from the Arrowhead Regional Development Commission this proposal offers consulting services to the city to be able to facilitate an update to the city's comprehensive plan. It was requested to initiate discussion re regarding developing a potential payment schedule, um, which is currently not budgeted for 2023. Staff has reached out to ARDC and received preliminary indications that they would be willing to discuss developing a payment schedule. No further details have been yet received on this request. Um, Recommendation, recommendation from staff is to continue to review and evaluate this proposal as to how it may accommodate the city's long-range planning initiatives. <clears throat> um, Mr. Jeffries, didn't you have a couple of details on that? I do, Mayor Carter. I have a couple of updates and a couple of presents for everyone. First, what I have is a summary of our current comprehensive plan as it is currently constructed. You can refer to this as sort of like a condensed table of contents, shall we say, to let you know what's in there. And then I also have for everyone a copy of the comp plan. Now this comp plan was most recently adopted in 20, July of 2015. And so some things stay the same, some things changed. Uh, please refer to that at your leisure to see. I'll give some highlights of to what the plan presently includes. Uh, it is a common plan, has many of the elements that are common to comprehensive plans, and it includes vision and goal statements for housing, transportation, utilities and community infrastructure, mining, timber, tourism, natural and cultural resources, economic development, recreational open space and cultural arts, land use, intergovernmental cooperation, and implementation. Regarding our discussions on a potential payment schedule, I have received further information, and this particular group, ARDC, Arrowhead Regional Development Commission, uh, will accept either a two installment payment at beginning and end, or a three installment schedule at beginning end and an intermediate at the initially proposed amount of $14,287. That's all I really have as an update. There. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. Anyone, anybody have any comments, input, questions? Um, obviously, this will be a topic for discussion at the working session, so we can really get into details, um, get a general idea of the direction the council wants to go with it. Mr. Jeffries. <clears throat> The summary was composed by yourself, correct? 
Yes, correct, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Very good. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any other questions? Comments? Have something to read tonight. <clears throat> yeah. A little light reading. A little, little light reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. All right, moving on. Um, item K. <clears throat> League, of Minnesota, League of Minnesota Cities Lost Control Workshop Additional Information. The City Council on March 7, 2023 authorized a, the Administrator to attend a League of, Minnesota, League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust Safety and Loss Control Workshop on the City's behalf. Additional information regarding this event was requested. The information is attached. Information only. Still hard to believe they're holding that in Virginia. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look if you look at the list of cities on here in Virginia, Minnesota. That's excellent. Kind of helps you got the juices in the middle too. Yeah. Comments? They've it, been advertising that and other things pretty heavily on Facebook, so. Yeah, they? Just informational as well. Mm -hmm. Moving on to uh, counselors' comments. We made it through another meeting. <laughs> You're up first. What do you got? Uh, <coughs> sorry to disappoint, but I don't. Nothing? Really, I guess. I just wanted to say thanks to everybody that did everything with the curling club this weekend and how well it went off, and Denise. Did a fantastic job. She's not here tonight. She yeah. taking a well on vacation. But uh, <coughs> and uh, congratulations to the Lawless brothers and Nate Nygaard for winning the Bonspiel for the first time in twenty years. Nice. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> lots, of, lots of practice. <laughs> lots of practice, but they got it. Yeah. And uh, no, it was just a fantastic weekend. It was just really nice to see the community come together. Just I love watching it. That's awesome. I was under the weather, so I had to miss out. Hmm. I guess that's it for me. Thank you. Um, I just want to congratulate the, kind of mentioned earlier, but the girls basketball team and it might be that was mm -hmm. awesome. <coughs> I think it's the first time ever that they've won and yeah, it was, it was fun. It was exciting. So congratulations to them and also the fuel bond, bond spiel, whatever that was. It's fun. I went out and it was fun to see the community and everyone getting together. So. That's awesome. Yeah. And also, um, thank you to like the people that uh, sign up for all the boards. It's fun and it's awesome that all of the boards are complete and finished. So thank you to everyone. That's all. That's all. <laughs> thank you. Well, everybody touched on my comments. Um, congratulations to our girls, uh, Class A state champions. That's amazing. You don't see that very often. Coming from small communities like ours, that's that's great. I mean, to see that, and then our, our football team this year too is amazing. So congratulations, young ladies. Enjoy. Uh, with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Uh, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Meeting adjourned. Now.